Hello everybody and welcome to my JJ McCarthy prospect breakdown. JJ McCarthy, the 6'2", 219 pound quarterback from Michigan, has been getting a lot of draft hype during the offseason and is currently rumored to go within the top 5-6 to six picks within the 2024 NFL Draft. There have also been rumors that teams like the Giants, the Vikings, the Broncos will trade up to select JJ McCarthy. But McCarthy, in my opinion, does not deserve this type of hype, and I do not believe that JJ McCarthy right now is a franchise quarterback. But before I get into the rest of this video, make sure you guys like and subscribe. 96% of you aren't subscribed, so please hit that subscribe button, it's a big help to the channel and only takes a second. But JJ McCarthy was a four-star recruit at a high school and committed to Michigan in 2021. He got the starting job after beating out Cade McNamara in the 2022 offseason, and in 2022 he threw 22 passing touchdowns to five interceptions, had the 16th highest QBR in the FBS but lost to TCU in the college football playoffs. And in 2023, JJ took a big step up, being PFF's 11th highest graded quarterback. He also threw 22 touchdowns, only 4 interceptions, and had the 3rd highest QBR in the FBS. In 2023, he was also a first team All Big Ten, and won the 2023 National Championship with Michigan. To start off with JJ McCarthy's strengths, he's one of the best quarterbacks in this draft at throwing outside of the pocket. He had a 71% completion percentage on throws outside of the pocket, and consistently keeps the play alive by not unnecessarily scrambling and staying behind the line of scrimmage to possibly make second life throws. He also has very consistent footwork, always hitting the top of his drops on time and not wasting steps. He also has great pocket mobility and has good feel for pressure and knows when to step up in the pocket or leave the pocket. He also has good velocity on his throws and can consistently make throws into tight windows and has good accuracy. However, JJ McCarthy has a lot of things that he needs to improve on. First, his accuracy at all levels of the field can vary a lot. This is displayed best by his deep accuracy. Some balls could be absolute dimes or just flat out way off. He is also, in my opinion, a one velocity quarterback. 90% of his throws were just hard and fast, regardless of distance, and he also lacks touch over the middle of the field. His arm strength is shown in velocity, but not distance. Balls either die at receiver's feet or they have to track back to balls. He also can consistently throw behind receivers and does not lead them up the field, and he can also get stuck on his first read. But with all that being said, let's get into the film. Alright, so starting off the JJ McCarthy film against Ohio State, this is 2022, which is, in my opinion, JJ McCarthy's best game that I've watched from him. He had four touchdowns in this game. This first one is going to be JJ McCarthy in structure, and then watch him roll out of the pocket. More importantly, look at how he directs this out route here up the field. And once this guy cuts up the field, this defender, you know, loses his ground. McCarthy makes a crossbody throw, uh, and I understand it's a crossbody throw, but... The receiver does have to track back to the ball uh, and tackled, but could have been free for a touchdown here. Here's a really wonky throw from JJ McCarthy. Look at how on this play, we're going to be focusing on uh, this out route over here. Boom. Cuts the route. JJ McCarthy hits the top of his drop. But then look at the throw. Throws up and behind him. It just, I don't know why he needed to put that much power behind this throw, but obviously ends up behind him and way above him. All right, so we're going to be looking at this angle from uh, the first touchdown that JJ McCarthy throws to Cornelius Johnson. Going to have a double mid blitz here from these guys. And McCarthy does a good job of keeping his eyes upfield, not panicking too much, making a throw here. But then Cornelius Johnson turns the corner, breaks this tackle, and then ends up scoring a touchdown. All right, and this is the literal next play in my film. Uh, this is the other... Cornelius Johnson touchdown on a post right here. But what I want to notice or what I want to show first is JJ McCarthy's footwork. One, two, three. Hops, hits the top of his drop, notices these two blitzers coming, steps up in the pocket, keeps his eyes downfield. And then this guy over here is completely lost. Cornelius Johnson is wide open here and a good throw on that. And Cornelius Johnson is going to run into the end zone. All right, so this is the third passing touchdown. This one's to Colston Loveland. So a bit of a weird play. We're going to have a fake reverse and then a tight end leak out here. Uh, but this play is just kind of wonky because a few things happen. First is everybody's in position here. But then you see Cornelius Johnson's on the ground right now. And so Denzel Burke stops. And then this defender is looking back to see what happened. So Colston Loveland gets free here. And then uh, good touch on that ball. And then Colson Loveland is able to run in for the touchdown here. All right, so this play ends up not working out, but this is a great display of McCarthy's ability evading pressure in the pocket. This free linebacker is, is like he's got J McCarthy dead to rights. He's on his back foot, but look at how he spins around and creates a second life, even though it goes incomplete. Good ability to not get sacked. Good ability to get out of a bad situation and a pressure here. All right, so this is JJ McCarthy's touch, uh, final touchdown in this game, a rushing touchdown. This is going to be quarterback power with the halfback being the lead block. 
McCarthy gets through the hole and then scores a touchdown. All right, so starting off the TCU game, this was a, both a really bad game to start off, but then a much better game to finish it. Uh, for the first play, this is going to be the pick six. This receiver is going to be running a quick out. McCarthy hits the top of his drop, looks to throw, but then he throws way behind this receiver, and the safety, the strong safety, has a chance and a good opportunity to pick this one off. And then... Fast forwarding a little bit, ends in a pick six. I'll talk through this play because this ends up not being called a touchdown, but this is the long bomb throw to Roman Wilson that was called down to the one yard line. Uh, I think that was a touchdown. Again, I think that the little mistakes really show up with McCarthy here. Again, this is just an easy, should be an easy completion. Throws behind it, can't receiver can't come down with it. McCarthy can make some really bad throws, yes, but he can also make some absolute dimes. Look at this play. I could just talk through this. Look at the the, the window that he throws that through. Is leading him up the field. Great throw by McCarthy here. All right, so this is going to be a fake handoff and then a pass back into two go routes and then a block and release. So what we're going to see here is obviously Donovan Edwards passes it back. Uh, this tight or this receiver here gets free open and then McCarthy just lays it in there for an easy touchdown. This isn't the absolute worst interception I've ever seen, but of course this is the other pick six in the game. So McCarthy thinks he has Loveland right here on an in route, but then this linebacker just jumps the route here. It is a little flat and Loveland probably wouldn't have come down with it. Uh, the cornerback draped all over him, but of course another pick six in this game. McCarthy is a very nimble player and when he's on the move, he can fit through some closed gaps. Look at how he fits through this gap right here and then runs past these defenders to score a rushing touchdown. All right, and then this is just another weird touchdown because Roman Wilson, this defender just just like falls weirdly, but good ability for JJ McCarthy to continue to run and he throws off of his back foot here uh, and then Roman Wilson catches the touchdown. That's, that's all I'll show for the TCU game. You'll see my player comparison for JJ McCarthy later, but as a Jets fan, I've seen this play or this mistake happen literally like 10 times. McCarthy rolling out, should get it out of here. This is not intentional grounders. You got a receiver here. And he just wants to throw a just an awful throw. And Caleb Downs can't get two feet, uh, can't get his foot in bounds. But that's a terrible throw. And I've seen this happen a bunch of times with the player comparison that I have him to. It's just a throw where he should just get it out. And then I can really just also talk through this play. Blake Horm is just gonna leak through the middle and then just run a flat route wide open into the end zone. Like a lot of JJ McCarthy's touchdowns up to this point have either been wide open, the defender makes a weird fall and McCarthy just, or McCarthy has an easy throw. I mean, hopefully we'll see some more outstanding touchdowns later. I can't see what receiver this is because his number is blinded by the light. But again, look at the, he has a great route here, breaks this receiver off and then airmail throw by McCarthy here. Again, I can talk through this one. This is just a dig route that ends up in a touchdown because the receiver did a bunch after the catch. I mean, tell me a touchdown up to this point that you've seen from JJ McCarthy in this film breakdown that has been all JJ McCarthy. Dude, JJ, lead him up the sideline. Look, he had to, he fell down, man. And look, look at him after the catch. Look at him look and then he shakes his head, bro. Lead him up the sideline. I remember on Twitter when people were saying that JJ McCarthy, oh my God, JJ McCarthy, he led Michigan all the way down the field and, and, and won them this game. All right, well, let's look at this play. JJ McCarthy, like Roman Wilson has to jump a mile to get this ball and this should have been picked off, but Roman Wilson is a great receiver, so he caught this one. And again, I hate to be nitpicky, but that really could have been a pick. And also we're, we're forgetting that Blake Corum had like a 30 yard run as well. And then here is the touchdown. I mean, this is just a flat route. Roman Wilson just scores here. I mean, how much of it was actually JJ McCarthy? Here's a nice throw from JJ that I actually really like. Look at how Roman Wilson's on a post route here and he's got to fit it in between two defenders and he layers it over uh, this cornerback and Roman Wilson gets good after the catch. Like that's a great throw. And then immediately after, look at JJ McCarthy. A, a flat route that he airmails. Like this is this is where he was, this is where the ball was. And that if, if he didn't tip it, that it was probably going to be an interception. Like I know that JJ McCarthy is good, but another airmail a sail ball here and i mean this was jj mccarthy's best it was a scramble here that he uh escapes for about like 20 and then breaks a tackle here to get and he takes a big hit that's jj mccarthy's best play of the game everybody dogs on uh, everybody dogs on jada daniels everybody dogs on K and on caleb williams but they make this play this is a routine play for both of them 
And then this was JJ McCarthy's best passing play of the game. It was again an in route here that uh, Colson Loveland, I don't know why this defender jumped, what a weird play, but Colson Loveland takes us all the way after the catch. I know I, it may be, seem like I'm being nitpicky, but I'm watching this film all the way through. It is 3.05 right now. I started this film breakdown at 1 p.m. It's three o'clock right now. A lot of JJ McCarthy's completions are just short routes. And then you have a bunch of mistakes where the ball is behind. He's not leading the receiver. It's way too high. He's lacking touch. There are just so many flaws that I think JJ McCarthy still needs to, to hamper out really. For him to be successful at the NFL level, I don't see how you can objectively look at this film or watch a game and think this guy is the sixth overall pick. And again, I, these are the four most important games, and that's why I wanted to view these four games. But I know there are, have, there are some better throws that McCarthy has. There are some better games with more highlights. But again, the, the everything is really short, and if it's not short, the receivers are doing a lot after the catch, uh, or there's a broken play, or it's like a trick play where he's scoring a touchdown. I don't know how I can come away from this film breakdown and think he is definitively a top five, top six pick in the draft. My player comparison for JJ McCarthy is going to be Zach Wilson. And my comparison isn't in terms of how JJ will work out in the NFL. It is in terms of playing style, size, and their shared weaknesses. First, both have near identical sizes with the same height and a weight difference of only five pounds. Both have really similar strengths and playing styles where they thrive at throwing outside of the pocket with great pocket mobility and have good velocity on their throws. But they also make the same type of mistakes. Both are one velocity quarterbacks who lack touch over the middle of the field and make mistakes while trying to extend plays. Though the differences between the two are that Zach has more of a gunslinger mentality and will go back to the deep ball at any moment while JJ is much more of a conservative quarterback. And also Zach never had good footwork and that plagued him in the NFL and JJ has much better footwork. But I am much lower than the consensus on JJ McCarthy. I'm giving him a 6.25 prospect grade, which is a third round grade. He is also comfortably outside of my top 50 prospects, but is within my top 75. And I think he has the potential to be a good quarterback, but I don't see him ever being near the top 10. And he also has a huge boomer bust factor. But I watched a lot of Michigan over the last two years. And when I heard JJ getting top 10 hype in the draft, I was bewildered. I didn't think we were talking about even the same quarterback. By the way he looked on tape, in game, and looking at advanced statistics, it is much, much, much more of a risk to take him top five. And also, if you even take him top five, he is not going to be ready to start year one. I don't even think JJ will be ready until year two or more. A big reason why JJ McCarthy is getting much more hype than guys like Bo Nix and Michael Penning Jr. is purely because of the age factor. Because Michael Penning Jr. looked way better on tape and was way more productive. Same thing with Bo Nix. It's just there are a lot older prospects. And yeah, he just turned 21, so there is that appeal that he's a quarterback that you can mold and have in the building for a while, but a top five pick is way too rich for me for JJ, and you're betting the future of your franchise on him. But that's gonna do it for my JJ McCarthy prospect breakdown. Let me know your views on JJ McCarthy as a prospect. Let me know your views on JJ McCarthy in the comments section, as well as why you think he deserves the draft type or why he doesn't. As well as make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Follow my TikTok and my Twitter, and I will be streaming the NFL draft on April 25th at eight o'clock on this channel. But that's all from me. I'll see you guys in the next video.